Hello, everyone, and welcome to, to this session. Without further ado, our speaker is Laura Talman, who is a professor of mathematics at James Madison University and whose published research has included algebraic geometry, knot theory, and games. Uh, Dr. Talman is a computational designer who leverages a diverse toolbox of 3D design software and technical materials to create elegant and aesthetic realization of idealized mathematical objects. She's a Project Next Fellow, a recipient of the Alder Award, Trevor Evans Award, and Shuv uh, Outstanding Faculty Award, and has been featured on Thingverse, Thingiverse, um, Adult Fruit, and Science Friday. And I will put, pass over to her to be speaking about 3D printed hinged um, dissections and uh, foldable polyhedra, a survey and the call to action. Um, so, hi, everybody. Uh, I, you're welcome to my house. That's where all my teaching happens now and where apparently all my talks happen now, as for all of us. I'm so glad, actually, though, because people can be here from all over. And thank you so much to the organizers for setting this up. I'm unreasonably excited to be in the center because I'm a big fan of symmetry. So I'm, I'm excited to be in the center of the schedule. I did change my talk title a little, but it's basically the same thing. Um, hopefully that's okay with everybody. Here is a link that is a link to the slides that this talk is. So if you go to this link, you'll see this talk. I'll give this again at the end. The reason I give this to you is that there's gonna be a, a lot of links in the talk that you can then get by having this link. So again, I'll give that to you at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a bunch of uh, 3D printed objects uh, culminating in one that I want your help on, okay? I like 3D printing things on desktop printers that seem like they shouldn't be able to have been printed on desktop printers. And the first thing I wanna show you is something that you may actually own because I may have given it to you. If you were at a previous uh, G4G conference, I don't remember what year it was, but this was the gift I put in the gift bag one year. It is a triangle square from uh, Dudeney's famous hinge dissection. Um, so uh, you can see that one's a triangle, one's a square, but I can take this one right here and turn it into a triangle. It's not a magic trick, it's literally turning into a triangle. And then I could, if I wanted to, I could turn this one into a square. Uh, boop, it's kind of hard to see. And uh, there's a square to triangle. So this is 3D printed entirely in one piece on a desktop 3D printer. This one right here was printed on a very fancy printer at Shapeways so that you can like order one if you don't have a 3D printer. It's very small. It actually, I'm actually really impressed that it worked. And this one, I have it right here, was printed on a 3D printer that actually prints in full color. It doesn't do it very well but it does do it. And so this also was printed entirely in one piece and the color was printed. It's actually a CMYK ink cartridge that colors it as it prints. The color was also printed as it happened. So the hinges are enclosed and the color happened all at once. Um, this is not designed in Tinkercad. Here you can look at it in this program called Tinkercad, uh, which I'll have a link to in a minute. Uh, it prints like this flat with the hinges sort of facing up. It was designed in OpenSCAD or OpenSCAD uh, using some pretty simple and frankly hacky code uh, that just puts these shapes together. There's some math involved in how, what the shapes are and the rest is just uh, positioning all the hinges. And here's what I was talking about with the links. Uh, if you want, you can read an article, a very short article I wrote about it. You can download the file to print it yourself. You can order one that's already printed for you. You can modify it in Tinkercad, or you can play with the code in OpenSCAD. I didn't have a link for that, so I just put my email. So after each object, I'm going to have a page like this that tells you how you can get a hold of the object. Okay, but really the whole deal with the triangle square is the hinge. So here's just the hinge by itself. When you're 3D printing, this is the hard part because you're printing this hinge already assembled and together. And it's not just a snap fit, it's actually a conical hinge. And if you, that's the kind that I like to make at least. And so you, it's like got a cone on each thing sticking out of the middle and then there's a cone shaped hole on the outside. And you know, when a 3D printer prints, it prints a layer at a time. And so if it's printing in this flat orientation, 
the hinge pieces actually never meet. Uh, there's a place at the top and the bottom when it prints this way sideways that it might have some droopiness. Uh, but it's pretty easy to print. It's a little harder when the cone is up like this, but it can be done. That's how the triangle square works. But there's a lot of adjustments, like depending on your printer, on your filament, on whether it's Tuesday, whatever it is, uh, you're going to have to make fine adjustments. So I think you can see my mouse here, at least I hope so. Uh, so you can see you can make these fine adjustments here. And if you want that code, just the code for a hinge, so that you can put it in your own designs, uh, there's a link right there to where you can download that OpenSCAD code. Uh, and I wrote a very short uh, article about it. OK, so how can we make that, I don't know, more interesting, worse, depending on your perspective. From a 3D printing perspective, it would be worse. This is an object where the hinges print in all three orientations, fully enclosed on the printer at the same time. So I have one right here. I call this a fidget cube. It's a cube and you can open it and fold it around and it becomes a, a cube again. Now, if you look at this slide, you can see I put stars on the one face of it, one side, because the cube is actually turning inside out and these outside faces end up on the inside after I do this operation. And notice that I'm not doing and undoing an operation. I'm kind of folding it. It's like a hexaflexagon-y type of feeling thing. Okay, this is actually the first one I ever made right there, that one in the picture. I don't know where it went, but I was kind of like, obsessed with making it as small as possible. And the smallest I've managed to make it and still work, remember it is printing fully assembled, now that I've said it, I think I could actually do it with a smaller nozzle and get it smaller. Oh, I wish I hadn't had that thought. But here's the small one. It's very tiny. Um, you may notice that in this one, I've sort of cut off the corners of the cube on one side so that you can really tell that you've turned it inside out. Uh, this is actually really fun, like as a fidget thing in your hand. Um, and you can print like racks of 12 of them at a time if you dial in your printer. Uh, here's what it looks like in OpenSCAD. I have the code for this freely available as part of a tutorial workshop that I have online. Um, it prints standing up, weirdly, like this. Prints like this, fully assembled, standing up, just like in the picture, which means that a cube is printing on top of another cube when that happens. Uh, this is a bin of all of the failures that I was experiencing as I first tried to learn how to print a cube on top of another cube. Uh, there are many. Here's the place where you can download it to print it, or you can have the code so that you can mess with the hinges and make it work for yourself. If we take that same idea a little farther, we get this thing I call the fidget star. And I took a video of this one because I wanted to make sure you could see it. So here's the fidget star, just like the fidget cube, except that when you turn it the other way around, you get a stellated rhombic dodecahedron. And so it, all it is is the same thing, but with the um, inside cut out cleverly so that when you do this, you'll get this object. So, and again, you just keep going and it folds, and it prints all in one piece. This particular one actually prints uh, folded up for some reason, I think because of the way it's cut on the inside, it really likes to print folded up. So this is actually a picture of a video of somebody printing it. And you can see it's printed without the support. If you look at my mouse here, you can see this little doodad thing. The worst thing that happens is like under each hinge, sometimes there's a little stuff you have to cut off, you know, but it is printing a piece on top of a piece and all the hinges are printing in different orientations. It's insane. It makes people really mad, actually. I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of comments on Thingiverse about how my object is broken and could not possibly print. And then people actually take the time to upload a picture to prove to me how broken it is. But it is actually a working model. It's just really hard to get your printer to do it. It's kind of like a tor torture test for your printer. Um, this one down here that's yellow, this is a, a company called Mosaic Manufacturing that makes a thing called the palette, which feeds in different filament strands and then splices them together so that you can put it into a one nozzle printer and print a multicolored object. And they use this as a demo because you know it's a torture test. And so I have this giant one now that they printed for me. Uh, that was actually printed all in one piece, fully assembled, and two colors, with, not with ink, but with two different filaments. So I'm glad I didn't have to print that one. 
Okay, so a lot of you probably have already uh, noticed that what I've really done here is made one half of a Yoshimoto cube. So a Yoshimoto cube is a very well-known construction. I have a colorful one here where, oops, where, uh, you know, you fold it just like the fidget cube, you fold it around. People make photo cubes like this too. If you were a kid at KF, you maybe made photos and photo cubes out of styrofoam and did this. But the thing about the Yoshimoto cube is that if I can get it right, hold on just one second. Aha, there it is, see? It's actually two pieces that are put together. I'm gonna put this one down for a minute. And each piece is the fidget star that I was just showing you. See, you turn it around and it's a cube. And then you turn it around and it's the stellated rhombic dodecahedron. And then, so you, it's actually really cool because you know, you're effectively making two cubes out of one cube, which is a nice clever trick, okay? Or two rhombic dodecahedrons. I don't know if I can do that with that one hand, you do, I can, uh, like this. And then you, they go together. Now I see that in the chat, someone said, I didn't think you could put those together. Uh, you can't put mine together because the hinges get in the way. Okay, so I'm not able with my methods to print one that does that. Although I do have an article uh, right here in this last link. I wrote a really long article for Shapeways about the evolution of objects like this. And there are other people who have gotten really close to printing pretty satisfying uh, Yoshimoto cubes. I think I can just put it right back together like this if you want. to. Nope, hold on. Now I'm determined to do it. There we go. And now it's together. It's so awesome. So I really recommend buying one of those. Um, anyway, I have an article there about people who are printing them on more, you know, like on a printer, you'd find it Shapeways, a, a laser centering printer uh, that isn't one that's just in your house and has so many limitations. All the files are there. Anything you want, you can download and print it. Okay, so that, now that is crazy. And uh, let's just step back to something that's slightly less crazy. So um, the hinges don't really print well unless they're flat and neither the triangle square nor the fidget cube or fidget star have all flat hinges, but these do, uh, by, I mean like uh, parallel to the ground. Um, but these do, these are platonic solids and you can see they unfold into nets and they 3D print entirely in one piece, flattened out on the printer and then you can make you know, a nice uh, form with them and uh, it prints, see, it just folds out and it prints flat like that. So it's, well, that doesn't look very flat, does it? But I'm sure you can imagine what flat is. So it prints flat and all the hinges are like parallel with the ground. So it prints like a dream, it's fantastic. Um, and you're really just limited by the size of your build plate here. Uh, this one I did design in Tinkercad, which is terrible, uh, but it also means that you can go and mess with it if you want to without knowing any code. You can see I have literally made it out of base shapes like boxes and cones that I have placed myself and rotated around and made the right size. And if you have to adjust the hinges, you need to go around by hand and adjust all the hinges, it's a, a, absolutely terrible, okay? But, you know, you're welcome to play with it if you want. And you can make all kinds of cool stuff. Here's some other stuff that I made. I started at this point uh, making some that just snap together instead of being hinged and, and always in one position. And so I have this nice series here, and I think I have the red one here, and you can see these pieces just come out. So that way you can make a set so that you can put together, you know, whatever kind of polyhedra you want with this set. Like many of the, there's lots of building toys that already do this, uh, but uh, I have some code that will let you determine how many teeth, how thick, how thick the border is. See, so like here's two different examples that come out of the same code and you can kind of choose how your set is gonna act, which I really like. Um, that code is at one of the links here. Uh, this one right here, this is probably the most useful link right here because that has the code for doing this, which is actually pretty nice to have around. Um, okay, so, and that brings us to the whole reason we're here today, which is that I have a new idea, which might be dumb, or maybe it's great, 
but it's at the beginning. Like what I just showed you is stuff that I've sort of been working with for a long time and made more and more complicated and made better and better code for uh, and optimized. But this is stuff that's kind of at the beginning. And I wanna start out by talking about something. This is the only 3D model in the talk that I didn't design. Uh, this is by Design Make Teach. He makes these nice foldable nets that, you know, like this cross is the net for a cube. You can fold it up and make the cube. And if you look, you can see that he's put a nice like bevel here so that when you fold it, it there's actually some stability, you know, like they go together and uh, and touch there on the, on the corner. So I thought, what if you continue that bevel so that you actually have the full solid, right? So here is the print of that, okay? Uh, and here's the print and I can fold it up. And when I fold it, you can see it's becoming completely solid and I have a solid cube. This is not very useful because I could also just print this cube, right? <laughs> like not really worth it, but it's kind of cool if you are interested in nets and how they work. And I, I like being able to see where the volume comes from, okay? So here's my question. Ooh, this is now the interactive question time. What does this one make? I've got it right here. You can write in the chat. What is this going to make? It's just two. It's like a double cross. What's it going to make? I know what you're all thinking. Die cube, two cubes, right? You're thinking it's going to make two cubes. Exactly. And it is. So here's two cubes. At this point, you're thinking, why am I at this talk? This is a dumb thing to make. But you'll see it's going to get cool, I promise. So it's a little hard to hold together. But do you see how it makes two cubes here? And they're actually connected. I can you know, put them together. Somebody said a two by one by one. Yep, that's what I got here. Yep, a two by one by one, right? But check, oh, Roberto, you know what's gonna happen. Here's the cool thing. If I fold up this cube and I fold the other one the other way, I get a rhombic dodecahedron. Now it's getting cool. Okay, so now we have what I'm showing on the screen is a volume net for a rhombic dodecahedron, which I think is surprising. It's not obvious that you're gonna get a rhombic dodecahedron from that situation, but you do. Um, so, okay, so that's thing number one. I only have two so far. So here's the first one, rhombic dodecahedron. Here's the second one. What do you think this makes? It's got pyramids everywhere, but the two in the middle are square pyramids, if you can see that, right? Oh yeah, I hear that. Uh, the, Dan, the octahedron, right in the middle there, there's an octahedron sitting there, right? And then this other stuff, uh, it's hard to know what's going to happen, but uh, if you wrap it around like this, you get actually my one of my two favorite shapes, the stellated octahedron. It's a little hard to hold together, especially at this size. And I don't have all the clearances worked out quite right yet. So you really have to squish it together. But now you have a stellated octahedron, which is great because if you tried to print this, there would be a lot of support material here and it would really be really ugly, but now you can just have it. Uh, the little one's a little easier to hold together. So I'll do the little one uh, there. It's very sharp, very pointy stellated octahedron. Okay, so just so you know, uh, I did make this one in Tinkercad and it's a nightmare. You can see it's all messed up here. I'm gonna make this file available to you if you want it, uh, but you know, ju don't judge because I'm at the beginning process here. I printed it in flexible filament because otherwise this uh, foldable hinge would break. This isn't a hinge, it's just a little thin piece. It's a living hinge, I guess they call that. And so I made this uh, at a flexible filament, which I had never printed successfully before. I, I found this picture on the internet for you today to show you what flexible filament does, right? You print it and then you can actually smush it. I'm not using that property, but uh, but you could. It is actually smushy. Uh, the point is kind of hard, but I can smush that, okay? But here's the funny thing. I put this slide in my talk today and then I looked at it and I thought, you know what? That object looks really familiar that he's squishing, like really familiar. Like I even recognized this little nub right here. And then I realized 
this is one of mine. This is my pentagonal hexacontahedron bracelet that I made that I have on Thingiverse and Shapeways. And they even got printed for pretty models here. It's really amazing. And this company used it as their flexible thing, which I thought was just the coolest thing uh, to see it out in the wild like that. It's free on the internet. So I, I suppose they're, they're allowed to do that. Uh, I did a lot of iteration to get to print uh, with flexible filament. I was not good at this before. Uh, now I'm not good at it now, but I was terrible at it before. I finally settled on using the Ultimaker with, I think it's called uh, TPU 95A, which is a terrible name for products, but that's the name for the filament, not NinjaFlex, because that would be cool, but TPU 95A. Uh, anyway, that has been very successful. Um, and that's what's been printing these models. To make the design for the models, I printed all the pieces up separately and experimented with how to tape them together so that like as the user, when you fold it up, it actually feels good, holds together, makes sense, is kind of symmetric, all that stuff. And that is what where you come in. Because I don't really know a lot about these. I don't, can't even find anybody that's been working on these. I know that it's related to um, famous dissections of things, which is kind of how these two ideas uh, came about or famous ways you can break things up, um, but I don't really know. So my call to action is if you have an idea for a different solid volume net besides the rhombic dodecahedron or the stellated octahedron, go to those Tinkercad files, which are up here or any files you want, design it, I now know how to print these in flexible filament in a successful way. I will print it and we will see if it works. So let's make something cool. That's uh, uh, my call to action for today. Here's the link again, if you want it. And I will uh, type it in the chat also in case people missed it before. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Laura, for, for this amazing demonstration and talk and explanation. There, there have been actually multiple questions during the talk, which you already simultaneously answered, um, which which makes life very easy on my end. Um, but there was a question even before this, uh, the talk even started in the ah. Q&A section. And, and I'll just start by asking the first question, which is, okay. uh, can the modeling programs calculate yet the stresses that printed objects will be able to take at various points, given the material used, um, the printing algorithm or resolution, etc.? If you wish to print the parts of a mechanism, are there tools to determine what will be most load bearing or what modify, uh, modifications would help? So it's, it's there, a long one. Yeah, that's a long one. There are, I don't know what they are. So I know that from the engineering's perspective, this is a lot of research in this, like what stress is placed on it. Uh, I just it literally last week read a student thesis about how to do uh, infill in such a way that it shores up exactly the places that had been analyzed to be the weakest. Um, I don't personally know how to, to do that with the software that I use, but there is the, that is definitely a thing that people do. I'm just not one of those people, but it is a thing. Uh, so there's a question from the audience. Okay. Hi, Laura. Uh, Hi, Diana. I can't make myself visible, but I'm here. Um, so one of the things I've I mean, I love hinge dissections and I've thought about them for a while. I guess one of Hilbert's problems was whether you could um, hinge dissect a solid tetrahedron into a cube and it was mm -hmm. solved and you can't, but of course it's like the difference between rational and irrational numbers. You could make a really, really convincing really one. Close. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I've always, I have no idea how to do it and I, I don't, but if you could figure out how to make a cube that hinge dissected into a tetrahedron, um, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. I'll so let me tell you the two limitations to doing this because this will help for you or anybody who wants to try to make it because I would also like to see that. If you're doing like the, the hinges like this, like there's no way that I can lie this flat on the build platform on this side. I have to do it this way. And when I fold it up, if you notice, it has no hinges inside. And when I do it the other way, it also has no hinges inside. And my design would not work if it had any hinges inside. So that's basically why I don't have a whole series of these with different hinge dissections, because most of them turn out to be something that does have hinges inside. And then for something like this, um, like sometimes the way things are connected, it's hard to get a completely flat base, right? And so I'm also trying to be able to print it like in this easy way. 
And I, I don't know what, I think in your case, the thing that would be hard was how can you make that dissection so that it unfolds and you can print it flat? You know what I mean? And if not, we could just tape it together or something. Yeah, that sounds, I see. That sounds really, yeah. That's interesting, putting the hinges, where to put them. Cool, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, another question from the Q&A section is, um, do you have any tips for, for beginners in, in 3D printers and, and how they should, should get into it? Yeah, um, well, so if you don't have a printer, uh, there are much cheaper printers nowadays than there used to be. I, the, re the brand Prusa is supposed to be really good and they have a, a very inexpensive small one. It's actually not even that small. Uh, I've been enjoying the Taz printers, the Lulzbot printers, but I, I'm not really sure what they're making these days. Uh, if you have a lot of money, there's other things you can get. Uh, but hardware-wise, that's what I would suggest starting with. Software-wise, Tinkercad.com is the place, best place to start because you just drag stuff on there and there's lots of tutorials on YouTube about it. If you want to level up from that, my choice is OpenSCAD because I like to design the models parametrically with like code that I could control and be very precise and put a lot of math in there. That's also free. Uh, so I would just open SCAD, S-C-A-D. And then um, if you want to get fancy and you're an academic or a hobbyist, you can get Fusion 360 for free. Although the learning curve on that is pretty high, uh, but I do have some suggestions how to get started with that if anybody wants to. And thingiverse.com has a lot of downloadable models. That's where all my downloadable models are. So if you had a printer, you could download something. I'm looking around because everything is hard to print. This one's not that hard to print because it doesn't have any, um, the hinges are all flat. So go find stuff that's fun to print, start printing and fail a lot of times. And it's a big community online. And speaking about hinges, uh, there's a question in, in regards to, to should they all be uh, on the build plate? So is it important that all the living hinges be on a build plate? Yeah, in, in this case for the living hinges, yes. Well, although, wait, let me rephrase. I haven't tried it the other way. I thought about it because it's hard to get them all to be flat, right? So right now my definition of what these are is that they are there, <laughs> but it's possible that that it could be done another way. And I, I'm a little concerned about the stability of it, but I haven't actually tried it yet. I'm willing to try. And can you design snap hinges to form different nets? Sure, yeah. So this, these snap hinges um, are all, um, you know, they just make, uh, what are they called? Archimedean solids, right? So platonic solids, Archimedean solids. I'm working on the Catalan solids one just because I don't have that in front of me right now, but that they're my favorite solids. And so there's, soon there's going to be a snap set for those. Uh, that's not hard because for your Catalan solids, of course, all the faces are the same on every individual one. So you just have to make one and then you can put it together. So I'm working on that in a way that isn't too fiddly. Um, but yeah, basically anything you want. So I had, I think even a, a weird skew prism in one of mine, um, it doesn't matter, it's whatever you like, as long as you can get it um, into the software. Could you go into more detail how shapes uh, are formed out of other shapes? That's another question from the QA. Hmm, how shapes so, are formed out of so other, oh. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, that's actually kind of my whole question, right? Like I knew that this was going to make a rhombic dodecahedron. Like it wasn't a surprise, right? Because I know from the fidget cube how that shape works. I really understand that particular shape, right? So I wasn't surprised. And I, in fact, it was intentional. Also, look, did you know you can fold it up this way and even glue it together if you want. And then you have this nice, thing that makes a rhombic dodecahedron much more quickly. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I would like to investigate that more and I would like to have more cool examples. And I actually think that there's lots of people out in this audience right now that know way more than me about that and have good ideas right now. And that's what I'm hoping at least. A question from the Q&A. You said at the beginning that you like plastic filament. Have you considered metal printers? And what mm. are the pros and the cons of that? I have, well, I haven't considered a metal printer because frankly, I, you know, I have too many printers, no more printers. And also 
I just, I, yeah, I have not considered actually doing that myself, but I have had things printed in metal and designed things to be printed in metal or like stainless steel and shapeways is a nice way to print um, things. I don't somehow don't have anything like that on my desk right now that I can show you, but you can. Um, and also you can print in at Shapeways in, uh, it, I think they effectively print it in wax and then do a lost wax casting, just like for making any kind of jewelry. And I've done that and the design is different for those, but the hardware of the metal printer, I have not touched that. Another question from, from the, the Q&A. Um, is there a simulator yet that allows you to play around with the model before you print it to, to see if it works? Uh, make, uh, makers uh, known to the person who wrote this, uh, print a million copies to get things right. I um, there are things you know, like for example, if I really wanted to, I could put something like this into Blender and make it so these pieces moved in the software, so I could make sure that I had all the angles right and it folded up. But honestly, what I do the most is what you saw in that um, <laughs> in that glass bowl of all the failures. Is I'll print a tiny piece of the model over and over, right? Like I'll print the a, one hinge or one part of a hinge or two pieces that have to have the right angle, you know, and I, I'll print a little piece over and over to iterate because it gets expensive to print large things. And I'll also start small. Like if you notice, I have a little one and a big one because I iterated on a small one. And then once I knew what I was doing, I made the big one. Although actually that was terrible because then all the clearances were slightly different. And that's why it doesn't quite wrap around the way I want. So I am still, see how this doesn't come together right here that well? Like it's, it, there's a little gap. Uh, I need to fix that. Uh, yes, uh, Laura, thank you very much uh, for that. I I'm trying to work with the zonohedra. These are quadrilaterals uh, that make up uh, a polyhedra, but I wanted to use it in plywood. My, mm -hmm. my problem is that I want some sort of software that will let me design these things, output the dimensions, and uh, give me the dihedral angles. Do, do, do you know of any software that will do this? So are you, do you not know the angles already and you hope you would get them from the software or do you know them and you want to put them into the software? I, d I don't know what the angles are, no. Um, th these, oh. are these are irregular shapes. Um, but the mm. nice thing about it, all the faces are flat, all the faces are quadrilaterals. Oh. And um, I, I want to see if I can design uh, something, but I need some way of getting the, the data out. Right. Uh, I, that is an interesting question. I mean, I could imagine ways that you could put it in some software and then like, you know, make a little, you know, 88 degree angle and see if it fits wherever it is, but then that would be an approximation, which might, you know, maybe not a good approximation. So I could picture doing something like that in, um, in OpenSCAD actually, or wherever you made your object. Uh, you could even do that in Tinkercad probably uh, to get an approximation. But you could even import a file that's already created into Tinkercad and then try to measure it in Tinkercad, but it would be a little bit of a hack. Um, I don't know if there's something that does that, but that may be going more towards the actual practical engineering type knowledge that I don't tend to have. Um, I don't know what SolidWorks is capable of. Uh, I think Blender is capable of everything, so it might be worth Googling that just to see if Blender can do it, because it seems like it can do everything. Um, but I don't, I'm sorry, I don't personally know how to do that. Although I think I have wanted to do that in the past, so, but I don't know how. But the question is um, a simple one, or not, perhaps a very complicated one. Uh, could you turn a cat into a dog for kids? <laughs> Oh, you mean like actually like full? Okay, so so far I'm able to deal with a pyramid shape <laughs> and, and then a triangular pyramid shape. So I'm pretty far away from that, but somebody very artistically minded could do that. I, as you can see, I'm quite geometric and I probably couldn't draw you a cat on a 2D piece of paper, but I think theoretically you could do that and it would be awesome. And if you have an idea and you want to uh, prototype that with me, I could do the prototypey part. And with this, we, we, we have finished all the questions. Um, 
but but there are definitely people who are who are looking and and uh, got very excited uh, about all of this. I certainly did. So so thank you, thank you so much for for this amazing uh, demonstration and and all of the pointers and all of the the great great things to pick up on. Um, I'm I'm very keen to 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 explore some of those myself. So thank you, thank you so much, uh, Laura. Great, um, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks everybody for coming here.